What's going on? So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to represent polyhedral schedules in a computer. So in some earlier videos, we talked about how in the polyhedral model, we can use lexicographic ordering to map sequences of loop nests to vectors so that, um, you know, a program like this that consists of two different loop nests, one of depth two and one of depth one, can two statements P and C can be written out uh, as having the schedule that pij happens at time vector 0 ij and cm happens at time vector 1m0, where these uh, vectors basically correspond to the loop structure of the program on the left. Um, but we didn't really talk about what this notation means precisely or how you'd represent it in a computer program that uh, does program analysis. So the first thing to notice is that this notation is actually a little bit incomplete. So the loop bounds have vanished, right? So for example, we know that p11 happens at time 0, 1, 1, but according to this notation, there's nothing to stop us from saying that p7, 7 happens at time 0, 7, 7, even though actually the statement instance p77 never happens because the last instance of p is i equals 4, j equals 3. So the first point is that the schedules actually need to be partial functions. So to refine our notation, we can say that, excuse me, that the schedule is pij goes to 0, comma i, comma j for some, you know, set of uh, values that represent the loop bounds or some restriction of this set that represents the loop bounds, and similarly for cm. And the way we actually do this is we say that uh, pij goes to 0, comma i, comma j for all i between 1 and 4 and j between 1 and 3, and that cm goes to 1, comma m, comma 0 for all m between uh, 1 and 4. So we can kind of think of writing these uh, lexicographically ordered uh, schedules as set comprehensions or relation comprehensions. So how is this represented in a computer? And because uh, this is still just kind of abstract symbols, what's the grammar of these things and how do we represent them in a way that uh, allows us to do program analysis? Well, first let's focus on one schedule and the, the rest will follow because it's done in a very uniform way. So let's suppose we're just trying to represent this function that maps um, points in the two-dimensional space pij to points in this 3D space 0, comma j, comma 1, or 0, comma i, comma j for i between 1 and 4 and j between 1 and 3. Well, first let's make the output variables explicit. So another way to write this in the sort of set comprehension notation is pij gets mapped to time vector t1, t2, t3, where t1 equals 0, t2 equals i, t3 equals j, and i is between 1 and 4, and j is between 1 and 3. So basically, we've just given names to all the components of the output, and we've moved the uh, definition of the function from the left-hand side of this uh, set comprehension to the right-hand side. And actually, uh, we can think of this as a relation. So we were writing this as a function from one two-dimensional space to a three-dimensional space. We can actually think of this whole sort of uh, expression as expressing a set of pairs where the left-hand side is the domain of the function and the right-hand side is the range of the function. And then these brackets are actually just a notational uh, kind of syntax detail, so to make things a little more uniform, we can really think of this as a map from pairs i and j, which are in the uh, domain space p, to 3D tuples that represent time or a anonymous three-dimensional space, t1, t2, t3. So we've just made the notation a little bit more uniform. So now let's normalize the constraints. So we can rewrite this by saying, you know, actually this is equivalent to the set of constraints, you know, the set of pairs pij, comma, t1, t2, t3, where i is greater than or equal to 1, i is less than or equal to 4, j is greater than or equal to 1, j is less than or equal to 3, t is greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to 0. And then basically we've just replaced all the equalities with uh, sequences or, or conjunctions of inequalities and uh, made everything a little bit more explicit. And we can normalize the constraints even more by just uh, writing them out <coughs> in this slightly different format, uh, moving the variables around and making sure that they're all greater than or equal and then moving all the variables to the left-hand side and all the constants to the right-hand side. And we do it this way. Um, we've just written this in a uh, very uniform notation. So for example, you know, uh, one of the constraints would be i is greater than or equal to 1, another would be like t3 minus j is greater than or equal to 0, and so on. Um, and if we just remove the ands and think of the uh, conjunction as implicit, we can actually think of this as like a system of equations. It's a system of constraints, right? And you might recognize this as a... Uh, basically just a polyhedron, which is where the term uh, the polyhedral model comes from, that this relationship between this schedule, which describes the mapping from uh, points in two-dimensional space that represent the producer statement P to three-dimensional timestamps is actually a five-dimensional polyhedron. 
And so we can represent this whole thing as a matrix inequality plus some metadata. So in the computer, we can actually store this matrix, which represents the coefficients on all of the uh, constraints. So there's one row in this matrix for each of these different constraints. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten constraints. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows in the matrix. And then we keep so, a vector that's actually strings rather than numbers to store each of the variable names. And then we store, uh, you know, implicitly greater than or equal to these constants. And this is actually a mathematical description of the points in the five dimensional space that describe our schedule. But this doesn't contain any information about what's the domain and the range of the function that this five dimensional space models, right? So we actually also keep a little map that represents the domain and range metadata, which has actually, this is a function and the domain of the function is represented by dimensions one and two, which are called I and J. And the space of dom the domain is called P. And then there's an anonymous output space, which we know in the uh, actual computation represents time that's uh, represented by uh, components three, four, and five, or uh, rows three, or columns, excuse me, three, four, and five of this matrix. And so uh, if you look inside of ISL or sort of a polyhedral analysis, another polyhedral analysis tool, what you'll see is that sets and relations are actually modeled as uh, basically big matrices that represent this kind of uh, polyhedra plus some metadata that reminds you about uh, what the domain and range of the relation or a function of the set is. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of intuition about how inter the internal mathematical representation used in polyhedral tools works. And uh, I hope it was helpful. And if it was, I'll see you in the next video.